Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 Wow, so great to see everyone. Welcome to our first annual uh, Poetry Slam. And um, our, our scholars have been working hard on, on their poetry this month. Um, and they are super excited to share it with us. Um, I will, I, I didn't really tell y'all too much about this, but we, we do have, this, is, this will be a, a competition of sorts. We do have prizes for you. So we have prizes for each grade level. Um, we'll walk away with at least one, if, if not two prizes. And then we will have two grand prizes. Um, and the two grand prizes will be laptops. Right. So brand new laptops. So, um, are, there, are there teachers like counted in the competition for the <laughs> laptop and stuff? Because you said they have to do poems as well. You want the, do you want the teachers to be counted, Brandon? No. <laughs> I vote that we shouldn't be counted in this. I think it should be posted. Hey, let them be counted. It makes that challenge. <laughs> no, so actually, so um, teachers are not part of the competition. Teachers are are just leading the way for, for our scholars. So um, teachers are not part. Administrators are not part. Because um, if, if I was part, I would be walking away with a brand new laptop. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> what I have is fire. Um, don't worry, we have the judges in the, the judges. The judges are here in the audience. Um, so. Uh, we'll be fine. So without further ado, I'm going to start it off with, so what we're gonna do, we'll do by grade level. Um, we'll have the fourth graders go first. And so the, there will be a grand prize winner for fourth through six. And then another, the second grand prize winner would be from the seventh and eighth grade classes. My life is like an elevator with love that opens her arms wide enough to keep you safe. A trust that keeps your secrets as soon as my doors close. Built sturdy enough to hold the weight of the world, but delicate enough to break down, sometimes in need of repair. Always pushing those around me toward greatness, still confined by the structures that form us. My life and the life of others are like an elevator. My beauty, I am beautiful no matter what you say. I have true beauty, you may not, but I do. I am beautiful. You may not think so, but, but I know the truth. The season of giving, the season of love. The season of peace, Christmas, the season I love. The season of family, the season of fun. The season of togetherness, Christmas brings joy to the heart of everyone. The season of laughter, the season of warmth, the season of happiness, Christmas, the season I hold nearest to my heart. Summer 2020, summer life, summertime. I love summer life. 2020 summertime was my COVID summer. I spent the entire summer in my backyard. As I go outside, I feel the wind touching my face, the birds singing, but no one is outside. It's COVID summertime. Ride my bike, talk to myself, play Roblox, cast mm. prep 941 to 230. It's 2020 <laughs> summertime. Summer seems happy and sad. Louie, my dog, is happy I'm home all day. I'm a little sad, but a little happy. It's summer life, COVID summertime. Wisdom of the goddess. Oh, wise goddess, what is your wisdom? The wisdom is the truth, she said. The wisdom is the secret. The wisdom is the power you do not possess, not yet. Because the wisdom is the power you yet not understand. To understand the wisdom, you need to believe. To believe, you need to be pure, truly pure. Okay, so there's loving and fighting. Our love's been dying. Some people are crying because Black people are dying. These Caucasians are fighting, killing and getting fired, but at least some support us. Black Lives Matter. Why can't some understand that there are people dying out there? This is like a revolutionary war, 
We are supporting people and the others don't like them. There are more people in danger. They got guns. They pull the trigger. We got the we got flags, we got banners, and we got the shirts because Black Lives Matters. And we support it. There's just some who really don't understand. Now we have a new president. He supports us too. Instead of Trump, we have Biden now. That election was very challenging. Now there might be COVID, but it doesn't stop us now because we still support Black Lives Matter. We watched the election screaming, cheering for a new president because I last one didn't care. He didn't stop these issues like COVID-19. He even tell us, or Black Lives Matter. Now we have Biden using his power to help support us and make America better. Now we're here being quarantined and socially distanced. It's the only six feet apart. It's the way to protect us. They are still finding a cure, but a lot got the virus. They're in hospitals or staying home. Some don't trust the doctors or nurses. They stay home and be quarantined. But the ones who trust them, get they get hospitalized. Hopefully they survive. These sad moments, they don't want to die. But this is how life is. Only barely survived. So we looked at our vote. Hopefully we voted for the right president. Harbor me. They said to stop, to stop believing, to stop trying, to give up. They said you have to lose. It is your destiny to give up. Why should you win when all you have to do is to give up? But I said, no, I said, I will not give up. I will stand proud. I may be black, but I will not give up. I may be fat, but I will not give up. I may be ugly, but I will not give up. Tell me, why do you like to bring me down? <laughs> Interesting. Like I said, I will not give up. Okay, so I'll go ahead and present my poem first. It's titled The Forgotten Forest. A fearless tiger leaps across the forest floor, giving out an almighty roar. This shakes the trees and alerts the bees who buzz away in the light breeze. The forest is a godforsaken place, teeming with poisonous snakes. So a group of men hit the brakes and leave violence in their wake. Their chainsaws meet wood, birds call and flee as they should. After all, the men attempting to make good are destroying the wildlife's neighborhood. Deforestation ruins our planet, one by one, these trees and animals vanish. As Earth becomes more and more outlandish, we'll come to realize that it was never our canvas. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Mr. Sam snapping for me. It passes us by without leaving a trace, but we always wait on its arrival. It fills us up with joy and happiness, but sometimes it leaves us with wounds and sorrow. It's composed of everything we can remember, but always has us anxious for what's to come. It is what we'll never get back, but what we never realized we had. What really is time? The memories and people you found along the way or the failures and successes that you remember it by. The wise man said that it takes a team to accomplish your goals and it's never about one player, but that team isn't a team without trust and a brotherhood isn't a brotherhood without love. That brotherhood will forever live on, no matter the cost and the time that is lost. But is lost time really lost? Or do we want it to be gone because we don't want to think of the costs? That time is never really lost, but is the building blocks of something that will never fall apart and bring you things that you would never have thought. Lessons and memories and painful loss shape who you are, but it's the relationships and bonds you bring along with love and wisdom being above all. So what is time? We are united as one as we march together with the bright smiling sun. As one, we can get through any weather. We can lift 1,000 ton. If we fight as one, we can win any fray with we are united as one. When the game is all said and done, we can celebrate the we can celebrate that we won the battle, but the war has just begun. Cool, calm, and collected, you are a up-and-coming good student who has been getting way better grades, but, but you are like a ripe apple, ready to pick, and you are perfect, but no one picks you. At, at least that's what I thought until last night. I seen this wonderful person who picked me and actually cared to take me. They were a boy who didn't care about normal apples. He only cared about the the ones who were superior to others. I thought this was real until something horrible happened. I woke up. Then the next day I realized that today's society doesn't care about what you are, they just care about what you have. 
As the sun goes down, moon begins to shine. As moon shines, sun may wind because of the bold darkness. As this dark begins to end, you begin to wonder, what will the sun of tomorrow look like? If I was an eagle, I'll soar in the air and look down to see somewhere I could spread love. If I was a wolf, I'll howl at night to wish sweet dreams. If I was a lion, I'll be the leader and guide those who are weaker. But if I was the president, I would lead by example. I would respect everyone. I would fix everything. And I would help everyone in every way. 2020, what a year. What a year full of tragedy and misery. Death, a year full of it. Alex, Chadwick, Kobe, Gigi, many more. Did you waste your time worrying about celebrities you forgot to worry about yourself? COVID-19, over 300,000 passed. Were you considerate? Did you wear a mask? Are you gonna get that shot? BLM, not the sandwich. Did you support it? Were you against it? Did you back the blue? Say their names. George, Brianna, Atatiana. Protests, violence, a year full of emotion, opportunity, quarantine, time on our hands. But did you waste that time? Did you waste that time wondering when is it going to be over? Were you active, trying to lose weight, trying to stay sober? Trump versus Biden. Who'd you vote for? How are you so sure you left the nation in good hands? 2021. Live it to the fullest, even with isolation. A fair warning. How are you going to choose to live it? As if it's your last year or just another? The door to heaven. Before the stars and planets existed. Before the universe was created. Before there were such loving things on earth. We were all spirits in heaven. Wearing soft white clothes that allows us to fly swiftly around the sky. Wearing soft white shoes that gives us the ability to walk on those fluffy clouds. Girls who used to play the singing piano. Girls who always rode on phoenixes. Boys who used to play the ch to play chess and were never aggressive. Boys who always rode on dragons. This is what we all did in heaven before landing on earth. The heavenly mother once told us to start living on earth, to rule the world, to start learning and observe the real world, to start living like what we are supposed to live like. But after visiting for the first time, we would never want to go back again. There, all we do was work, work, and more work. It was also boring and no fun. We don't dare to ever go back again. A few days later, Heavenly Mother chose to bring us down to earth. She gave us wine to make us shrink. We didn't even know where we are. We suddenly took off our magic clothing and played in the water all day. After coming back to normal, we realized we were trapped in earth. We had no clothes to wear. We had no food to eat. We had no freedom. We only had worries. Everything was gone. Even Heavenly Mother was gone, has gone back to heaven. We were trapped. Eager to ask for help, we all cried for our mother. We wept. When can we go back to heaven again? We would always ask. Until finally, Heavenly Mother answered. Wait until I send you a message. We've all been living on earth for so many years. Have we got a message yet? Of course we did. The message is we should all cultivate doubt. We were once never afraid of the cold wind or nor the damp hot air. We were once always little angels who had no stress or worries. We were once all in a place of freedom. This was the amazing doubt. The door back up to heaven again. The title of my poem is, Who Are You? Not so long ago, my mama asked me, who are you? I was confused. Then she continued by saying, the shape of your lips, the shape of your nose, the shape of your face, the shape of your body. Is that who you are? The shape of your body, is that you? Each of us is different. You may be slim, strong, or fast, but does that represent you? Does it answer the question for you? Who are you? Nothing can really tell you who you are. Your soul burning in flames, the soil and the ground, your bare feet touching the cold, hard ground. Does that say who you are? Each of us is born different, but what's the point of bringing each other down if we can't even appreciate ourselves? We all go through something, but it's what you're going through right now that stands for who you are. Are you drowning your sorrows? That doesn't say you're weak. It says that you're an overcomer waiting to bust out of your shell. Are you breathing happiness? It says that you are brilliant no matter what you go through. 
there's nothing negative to say about it. Whether the problem itself is negative, that does not define you. How you fall down and rise back up is what defines you. We all want something. We all want to be happy. We all want to find joy or true love. But that, but that doesn't not happen until you accept yourself for who you are. Until you say that you can do it. Because you can. That's who you are. We may, we may, we may not be like everyone else. We may, we may not be pretty enough. Well, to be honest, there's no true definition of pretty or, or ugly. There's no true definition. We're the definition of unique. Every one of us. That's the only word we can use to describe ourselves. Whether we're twins, we are not the same. Different personalities, different destinies. Well, there's only one way we can all get to our destinies. It's where you climb to the top. The challenges we face, we overcome them. You stand strong, tall, and powerful. You believe that you can do it. That's what represents who you are. So when my mama asked me, who are you for the second time? I said, I'm me. I'm brilliant, I'm strong, and sometimes I'm weak. I can do it. I'm black, brown, and beautiful. You can do it. And that, that's the question we all need to answer. Who are we? My poem is called Change. Um, daily as I strive for greatness, I fight to bring about change. Change for myself, my future, and my family. That change may be hard and sturdy, but it will never lose its value. Change. Like the seasons change. Oh, as right. times. The liveliness of summer, hot and vibrant days, through the dead of winter, cold and early nights, through the ups and downs, good and bad, and through the transitions of spring and fall, like the seasons alter, as do our lives. Our energy and souls act as the seasons. That's my All right. <laughs> well, are you sure you're a math teacher? That was so beautiful, Ethan. Uh, yes. <laughs> So uh, this poem is called All Odds Are Against Me. Um, I'm a brown girl and I'm a Muslim. They think I'm, da I'm a danger to society. I face racism and misogyny and, and the tyranny of social inequality. I feel all odds are against me, but I'm not gonna accept this reality. I live with hope and the dream of progressive society where I can have a fair shot at life, liberty, and equality. My poem's name is Outer Space, our home, our world, the place over millions of years we started to discover parts of our world as humanity has always had the urge to. Now as we reach for the stars, our time as, as adventurers has just begun. Long story short, it was a bad time. Lost in my future dreams, blind to what's in front of me. Long story short, it was a bad time. Stuck with what people want from me, do I know who I wish to be? Long story short, it was a bad time. Missing those close to me, walking down these empty streets, long story short, it was a bad time. Yet here I am standing, ready as I'll ever be, long story short, I survived. Beauty lies within. It's staring back at me, its bright red specks on its nose, cheeks, and chin. No matter how much I look, that's all I can pin. It's a monster, it's me. The reflection in the mirror, I inch closer to the glass. I caress it, I look at it, I look at me. Low cheekbones, frizzy hair that I could just never control. Thin lines stir my lips. Fate, that's not right. I must love myself. I am no monster, I am me. I am the selfless girl that puts others in front of, before myself, that lends even a stranger a shoulder to cry. I am the epitome of kindness, I am me. I remember the rickety chains that confine us. Rattling, relentless, and ruthless, your standards. Standards set by society. Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat, I need not to follow these standards. I create my own standards. The chains break, they drop to my knees. I extend my hand out, I rejoice. I am free, I am me. Once again, I look into the mirror. The person I see is me. I am me, I am you. Grr, my dog at the window each time the uniform climbs the stairs. Met with a softer growl until the idling truck passes away or pulls away. I go to the front door, she is still watchful, and the plain paper package wedged between the door and the jam. Another name, shaken wonder, will it end up under the tree with a handwritten tag, Gregory. Some things are unseen, some things are unknown, and yet I see them, yet I know them. It's a beauty of its own, and yet it's terrifying. Terrifying in a way only I can understand. 
because what I see is me. When I look at myself in the mirror, I wonder, who am I? Why do I look like this? What are the features that make up me? Then I realize everything makes me, me. The blood coursing through my veins, quick-tempered, calm, tall, and athletic self makes the person I am today. That's it. All right, so my poem is entitled Black Man, right? Let me adjust my glasses. All right. <laughs> you were never meant to be a savage or a thug. That mentality was taught to you by a white men who despise your masculinity. You're a god by nature. You are strong and moral by nature. You are kind, respectable, and merciful by nature. Mm -hmm. You are a product of peace and righteousness. Mm -hmm. Don't take on the identity of a, of a beast mm -hmm. to, just, to just deny your identity as a god. Mm -hmm. Your royalty in, is in righteousness. Thank you. Right. But Janice, January 7th, 1971. I did not see you come into this world. I felt you the moment you came home. Beady, chink eyes shone from your elongated face. You cried all night, could not be consoled. Mama not understanding, saying you were switched at birth, not understanding that you were conceived when her childbearing window was now just a slit. She couldn't handle it. You were here to stay. You walked at three, never spoke intelligibly, but spoke with your heart. Oh, yeah. Love meticulously, unabashedly, devotedly. The gift that kept on, no, keeps on giving. You changed the direction of the family flow. Turned everyone into salmon ready to spawn. You were made of steel, a force to be reckoned with. Gentle, the roses stopped to smell you. Search a word, dominoes, bingo, always the bingo. You were in your element. Yeah, send me a bingo. Rhythm became you, born with movement that defied any force of nature. That calypso beat flushed out your frenzy. You couldn't stop. July 29th, 2019, I did not see you leave this world. I felt it the moment you transitioned. The light from your eyes shut forever. I cried all day all night, could not be consoled. Me not understanding that your time had come, asking why, I couldn't handle it. You were supposed to be here to stay, but you're still here, still speaking with your heart, still loving meticulously, unabashedly, devotedly. You are the gift, still giving, protecting us now from above still a force to be reckoned with. I feel you in the breeze. I see you in every search a word, every domino game, every bingo game. You are the element. We love you, Mr. Koda. Come on. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Koda. So, okay. So I, I'm not a poet, but this poem was inspired. I just want to say before my scholars come on by them, because they pushed me to do what I felt I could not do. It was, it was a challenge. Every Saturday we sat here and I'm thinking, oh my God, I can't, I can't do it. So I just want to say to all the some scholars who came in with trepidation during this, um, you are poets, regardless of what you think, you are poets. That's the gift that was given to us from the ancestors. And so you are poets, right? So mm -hmm. with that, I'm gonna call my first scholar. Koda, Mr. Coda, you can do difficult things. Yes, we all can do difficult things. <laughs> we can all do difficult things. <laughs> That's my past prep motto. All right, I'm gonna call Magali. I saw you earlier, are you here? 
Yes. Okay. Hi. My poem is called Until We Meet Again. Those special memories of us have always brought a smile to me. If only I could go back for just a momental while. Then we could eat and talk again, just as in the past. You were always so special to me, and it will always last. The fact that I'm no longer with you will always break me apart. But you are forever in my heart until we meet again, my love. Running, running, running. I can't take a breath. I can't stop. My entire life, I've been running. If I slow down or stop, then it's over. I can't even remember when I started running. I just can't keep up with all of these new problems and responsibilities. However, I look around and only see people walking. 50th birthdays, 60th birthdays, life is just a simple job for them while I'm running a damn marathon. Now that I'm thinking about it, I haven't always been running. I used to walk, but like most things, that didn't last. But then I started gasping, my lungs giving out on me. No, I can't stop running. It's all over if I stop. Then everything went quiet. Time stopped. My vision got blurry. I stopped running. Words cannot explain how much fear I had at that moment. Something just jolted in me, and for some reason, I turned around. What I felt was something familiar and warm. For some reason, I opened my arms and closed my eyes. I'm so tired that I don't even care anymore. Soon I felt the warmth and blacked out. I woke up to a blinding light. Gates made of gold stood before me. The gates slowly opened with angelic voices singing. My body and mind felt so relaxed. I was at peace. Without a second thought, I walked through the door. And that's the end. Nice. There are strong people in this world who despite all their scars, cuts, bruises, and tears, stand above, stand tall above the rest. There are some people who need to inflict damage on others to make themselves feel better. You will keep getting hurt and still you stand tall above the rest. They keep hitting you, beating you up with their words, knocking you down, but you can't fight back. No matter how bruised and battered, battered you are, you can't fight back. You must endure everything that is hurled at you. Take more damage. If you hit them, suddenly you become the bad guy, the villain in the story, despite how abused you may be. It's strange how people can attack you and render you defenseless, but the moment you fight back, the narrative changes. You will become the villain. You must endure the pain until they become tired. Strike with your heart, not your fists. Eventually they won't strike. Nonetheless, stand tall above the rest. Black people, black people are powerful. Black people are intelligent. Black people are strong. And they know that, they know that. So they kill us, lock us up for smoking a plant. Things will not change. We are still tamed. These protests do nothing. All this camping and guess who got bailed out? Now is our time. Now is our time to fight back. Show them we don't depend on them for freedom. Show them that we are powerful. Show them that we are intelligent. Show them that we are strong. We have it built in us. We just have to use it. Help each other out. Why are we killing our own people? Why can't gangs reunite with gangs? Go against the people that really hate us. Create a Black Panther number two. Complaining when Black people get killed when we are the main murder rate of Black folks. Think, will we ever get freedom if we're killing our own people? Reunite with each other. Trust me, we can do it. We can do it. Black lives matter. So here it is. Uh, the worker, endlessly toiling, struggling to make ends meet, slumping into eternal poverty, while the wealthy become even wealthier. The common man is drugged into submission through the eyes of Fox making socialism evil, through news websites that feed them lies, through both parties that allow the system to continue. They all echo the same cry. Socialism is bad, it takes your land, but when folks do it, they get trillions in bailouts. Socialism leads to dictatorship, but they don't mention the capitalist dictatorships in Africa and South America. He's Kai and my poem is called Reality Slash Dreams. I dream of what I can't do. I do what I can't dream. Sometimes I wake up to reality just for it to be a dream. I go to sleep to dream just for me to be stuck in reality. Mama, I had a bad dream. Swift, dark, blurry figures passing by. Why can't I cry? I have nowhere to hide. Mama, I had a bad dream. Being jostled out the way, everything has gone gray. I can't do nothing but pray. Mama, I had a bad dream. Gunfire coming from everywhere. My body is impaired. I hear nothing but despair. Mama, I had a bad dream. 
Have they done anything wrong? I heard nothing but joyful songs, but now people are struggling to live on. Mama, I had a bad dream. When will this nightmare end? My reality begins to descend. How long will this extend? Mama, I had a bad dream. How could I stay calm? I had a bad dream. Too horrible to explain, too complicated to proclaim, so traumatizing that it stains. Mama, I had a bad dream. I'm not sure that it's fake. Turns out I was awake. I had a bad dream. Uh, and mine is called I Am Here. I am here. I am here to keep to work and keep working. I am here to study and keep studying. I'm here to stand and keep standing. I'm here to protest and keep protesting. I'm here to be me. I'm here and keep being myself. I am here. I named it Twilight Mystery Box. Okay. Horizon. Bring me closer to the horizon and around sunset to the twilight so I could see freedom for once. It's so simple, but so awakening. Let's go to LA just for the moment or maybe Times Square right there. Don't ask me what we gonna do when we get there. Just know we gonna do something. Just know that our body's gonna take, take control. Just know that love, life and happiness is all we need to know when our dirty vans and Adidas touch the ground. And maybe we could go hang out by the salon a few blocks away and tell Big Ma all our feelings, all our dreams, all our needs, and what we see is reality once we step outside the lie. Life is like a mystery box, and I've been waiting to open it. I've been waiting to stick my head to look inside, like when Big Sis sends gifts, says don't look at it yet, but I'm gonna look eventually. And I know inside there's tears, fears, there's lies, tries, fails, hope, sadness, madness, but I won't miss. The restriction, the limit, the fake friends, it's toxic, it's the lace in the drink, throw it away, I don't want it. <laughs> so far, no designer, no failure, no trend will ever match the happiness I'll feel when I reach and I grab the freedom I've been looking all my life. And the things I will create will take me and fill me up with the beautiful bloom and the constant growth. So let's start here. Take me to the twilight sky with the trees, grass, and the dirt underneath, bring me closer to the horizon so I could see freedom for once, and then twice, and then three times, a trillion times more, and forever. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Not as good as all of yours, but um, here's my poem. It's called Maple Syrup. The soprano of the pulsating livelihood weeping beneath mama's skin, that of sweet diabetic ambrosia, the slops and slosh of fragrant golden blood spattering over the lids, is my penetrating groan for a wordless conversation between my soul and hers. Mama's skin is a shade between tan porcelain and main lacquerware, coupled with the bits of chocolate and coffee candy colored moles, freckles, hand picked from the indigo skies constellations. Perhaps I am dynasties away from mamas. Mine is the color of urine yellow, exploited by the free rents of my parasites, the colonies of acne, white scars, peeling scabs, the vibrancy of it all dimmed by the sun's glare, condemned as to never blend with the skin color crayon I fought over with this girl whose hair reminded me of lemonade and hamster hairdos. Mama savors up the resplendent maple syrup I drizzle over her Saturday waffles, grimaces at my bent knee I have tucked under my chin at the dining table as I watch. I hate maple syrup. I dab my squares of wimply waffles on a blotch of peanut butter, grimace at the viscosity of syrup Mama's breakfast is bathing in. When a generous rays of 10 a.m. sunlight stroke mama's high cheekbones, I see a halo peering above her thick brows, overthrowing her sunken cheeks, her under eye black holes, her chapped lips, her thinning hair. The wells on her heart chamber no higher balm can mend, her years of scrutinization and scrutinizedness. I see recently harvested rosy red apples in her cheeks. I see two celestial orbs of dark roasted golden sugar. I see pools of riches and California gold rush in her eyes. I can smell, bet I can smell the warm floral aromatic swirls of rustic tints of, of honey, of maple syrup. It's you whose best friend is the hue of my peanut butter. Mama's eyes are clear as gin, dark as molasses. Ones that hold pure love, skintless of torment, effort, longing, calamity. 
My eyes are bleak black beads. I like to pierce through a needle of thread to make friendship bracelets as a child. Mm -hmm. I swear they're black sun says it's impossible though. Mine hold angst, lassitude, solic solitude, the unreasonable, uh, uh, the unreasonable flight of a stubborn child. Mama dreams of a land of paradise for me. I dream of parched deserts of my incoming future. Mama's tough on the outside. Take some digging and gnawing to break the I know what's best for you. Tap the rigid trunk of the maple to drown in the sweetest, gooey sap inside. I broke my own heart, trying to forgive myself for breaking Mama's heart, while Mama still trying to learn how to love me. It is as simple and complicated as that. As I sit here in this room, home is liberation at last, but my airways constrict in this cage of sensory deprivation. Secondly, my grades are flashing like downtown traffic lights, too early for Christmas. Green, yellow, red, ew, my face whites. I have come face to face with death's baptism and the winds wrap the cement with this crisp fallen blankets of scarlet harvest gold creation. As I sit here in this room, the plague sweeps the world, claiming a million graves, leaving my prison untouched. Bloodshot eyes staring at my screen, trapped and alone as the grave count climbs up. As I sit here in this room, playing Minecraft instead of listening to my teacher in Zoom, pretending, deceiving, I know, playing games with my learning, waiting for the everlasting hours of class to end, breaking into a cold winter sweat as I'm giving my final test. As I sit here in this room, facing hell day by day, my brain is going to go boom if I don't find a proper way. Dim lights in my room, a hollow world with no people to behold. But one thing I know is that today is a reality check, that life does have an expiration date. As I sit in this room, I hear the song sung by the birds outside. I hear their play for their world is right. I see the leaves brown, golden, fallen, swept by wind, abandoning the trees from which they came. The trees barren stand, they wait. Spring will come again, they say. No need for fear or despair. This is but a moment in time. They know their beauty will rise again. As I sit in this room, I know there is a tomorrow. And while today does its thin with my present reality, tomorrow awaits me. And as long as there is a tomorrow, there's inspiration, there's beauty, there's hope, there's life as I sit in this room. I can speak. I don't know what. <laughs> I just, I'm honestly, I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> I've had so many faces. I've been guessing y'all in the comments because a lot of you guys did perform at the open mic that we had um, earlier this fall. And I'm just so honored to be here and see you all perform again that I've seen and those that I haven't. I'm not even surprised that you all are also amazing as well. I think it's so important to express yourself in this way. I see a lot of you saying that yours wasn't good or that you can't write well. And it's, it's not about that. It's about good, bad. Um, it's really just about you being vulnerable and sharing parts of yourself with other people. That's really important and powerful. You understand yourself when you do that. You understand others when you do that. So just thank you to everyone for sharing, even the teachers. Y'all shared too. Um, super honored to be here as a poet, but also just as an observer. Um, honestly, it was really, really amazing. Thank you so much for thank inviting you. me. Thank you for coming. Yes, um, thank you for all the amazing poems that I heard. It's, it's really touching to see so many young writers and young poets who are learning to empower their own voices and amplify their voices to take control of this world that it's going to be there so soon, right? And so thank you guys. Hey, this is Jojo from Dear Black Prophets Co. I just wanted to say I am super honored to be here, as um, Rodia said, and it's just so refreshing um, to see that our youth um, are able to express themselves and are able to find ways to navigate all the things they're seeing outside and all the things that are happening with this pandemic. Um, and I feel really confident in our future and our Black liberation, um, as well as the other students of color here. And so <laughs> thank you so much for inviting me and thank you for being vulnerable enough to share um, yourself and your stories. I just want to again thank um, everyone, administrators, teachers, the work that y'all have done with these children is so evident in what they produce. Um, and I think this is, this is what learning is about. And this is what this experience of learning should be about. And, and again, thank you for the energy that you bring to 
to your classes, thank you for the, the inspiration you give your children and, and scholars. <laughs> I mean, y'all are amazing, you know? And, and, and I mean, that's just, I can't say it any clearer than that. Um, keep on being who you are, keep on affirming yourself, keep on claiming your, your throne on a daily basis. And, and we will do our best to support you with that um, as best as we possibly can. You know, so I, I am so humbled by what y'all did today um, and, and, and the level of articulation and depth of thought that's, that's evident in this room is, is, is awesome. This is uh, Dr. Ramsey work. I've been in the DOE for 32 years, still in the uh -huh. DOE. Gotcha. about to retire and I want to say and I'm, I'm a, I also am a, a, a professor at where York College and I want to first start by saying you have an amazing group of students amazing group of young people I was in, blown away by the creativity blown away by the the, the passion I, I felt your energy and it, it was just unbelievable I mean this is a day that I will always uh, I'll remember. And, uh, and I wanna just say to all you teachers, thank you for that work that you're doing. You are something, <laughs> you're a beacon of hope for our children. And, and the fact that here you are on a Saturday could be doing whatever you wanna do and you are giving of yourself to these young people. Someone like me, I humbly respect and appreciate that on behalf of my family and I, we're very much appreciative. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you to continue to doing that work. And um, that's all I have to say. I'm just so, so appreciative of, of the work that you're doing. And thank you for, for everything that you have done for, for our children. And, and, and rest assured that and it's just interesting how I, I sent an email to brother, brother, brother uh, Sam, when I said, uh, th th you don't find the media when you're doing things like this, you know, you only find the media when when they uh, pinpoint on, on something negative in our communities. So um, I'm looking forward to help PR this program and 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 take you all to to another level in any way that I can. And thank you once again. May mm. God bless you and have a wonderful, safe, and enjoyable holiday season. Happy Kwanzaa to all of you.